Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We're having a Black History Month celebration here on The Last Science Show, so thank you for tapping in. You are in for some great information and some great history as we honor a black scientist. This African-American scientist was named Robert Henry Lawrence Jr. He was the first African-American selected to be an astronaut. He was also a test pilot and senior United States Air Force pilot with over 2,500 flight hours. Thank you for your service. The Manned Orbiting Laboratory, MOL, was a joint project of the U.S. Air Force and the National Reconnaissance Office to obtain high-resolution photographic imagery of America's Cold War adversaries. Authorized in August 1965, the MOL program envisioned a series of mini space stations in low polar Earth orbit, occupied by two-man crews for 30 days at a time, launching and returning to Earth aboard modified Gemini capsules. The United States Air Force selected Major Robert H. Lawrence Jr. on June 30, 1967, as a member of the third group of aerospace research pilots for the MOL program. Lawrence thus became the first African American to be selected as an astronaut by any national space program. Of the significance of his selection, Lawrence said with his typical modesty, This is nothing dramatic. It's just a normal progression. I've been very fortunate. Born in Chicago on October 2, 1935, Lawrence graduated from high school at 16, earned his bachelor's degree in chemistry from Bradley University at age 20, and became an Air Force officer and pilot. Lawrence was a highly accomplished pilot with 2,500 flying hours, 2,000 in jets, and earned a PhD in physical chemistry from The Ohio State University in 1965, the only selected MOL astronaut with a doctorate. He completed U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School in June 1967 and was immediately assigned to the MOL program. While serving as an instructor for another pilot practicing landing techniques later used in the space shuttle program, Lawrence perished in a crash of an F-104 Starfighter supersonic jet on December 8, 1967 at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Although both men ejected from the crash, Lawrence did not survive. He was survived by his wife, Barbara, and eight-year-old son, Tracy. Fellow MOL classmate and later NASA astronaut Don Peterson recalled in an oral history, Bob was a super guy. His death was a terrible tragedy. It surely was. After the Nixon administration canceled the MOL program in June 1969, seven of the younger, under 35, MOL astronauts like Carol, Bob Skill, Don Peterson, and Richard Truly transferred to NASA. And since Lawrence was in that age range, it is virtually certain he also would have been transferred. All in that group flew on the space shuttle in the late 1980s. It is easy to imagine that Lawrence would have piloted one of the early space shuttle missions. Because of his untimely death and the relative secrecy surrounding the MOL program, Lawrence's name remained largely unknown for many years. A concerted effort during the 1990s to overcome bureaucratic barriers over the definition of an astronaut resulted in Lawrence receiving proper belated recognition. In September 1997, in tribute to his outstanding accomplishments as an American space pioneer, the crew of the Space Shuttle Atlantis carried his MOL mission patch into orbit during the STS-86 mission. The flown patch was presented to his widow. On December 8, 1997, the 30th anniversary of his death, Lawrence's name was engraved in the Astronauts Memorial Foundation Space Mirror at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex which honors astronauts who made the ultimate sacrifice for their space programs. 20 years later, on the 50th anniversary of his death, NASA leaders honored Lawrence in a ceremony attended by hundreds. Former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden recalled that Lawrence was involved in the development of maneuver that would become a critical part of space shuttle landing techniques called flare. KSC Director Bob Cabana said Major Lawrence truly was a hero. He took that first step setting the stage for what was to come. His groundbreaking accomplishments more than 50 years ago continue to be an inspiration. 
showing that excellence knows no color. Wow, what a testament to all that Dr. Bob accomplished uh, in such a short period of time. Thank you for your service, Doc. And we thank you for watching this episode of The Last Science Show. Continue to like, subscribe, comment, and share for more videos. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science. The first black scientist we are going to honor is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many inventions, including a number of uses for the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher of the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut, including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. Carver was most likely born in 1864, enslaved in Diamond, Missouri, during the Civil War years. Like many children of the enslaved, uh, the exact year and date of his birth are unknown. Carver was one of many children born to Mary and Giles, an enslaved couple owned by Moses Carver. A week after his birth, Carver was kidnapped along with his sister and mother from the Carver farm by raiders from the neighboring state of Arkansas. The three were later sold in Kentucky. Among them, only the infant Carver was located by an agent of Moses Carver and returned to Missouri. The conclusion of the Civil War in 1865 brought the end of slavery in Missouri. Moses and his wife Susan decided to keep Carver and his brother James at their house after that time. As she had been in high school, Jemison was very involved in extracurricular activities at Stanford, including dance and theater productions, and served as head of the Black Student Union. She received a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from the university in 1977. Upon graduation, she entered Cornell University Medical College and, during her years there, found time to expand her horizons by studying in Cuba and Kenya and working at a Cambodian refugee camp in Thailand. After Jemison obtained her MD in 1981, she interned at Los Angeles County slash University of Southern California Medical Center and later worked as a general practitioner. For the next two and a half years, she was the Area Peace Corps Medical Officer for Sierra Leone and Liberia, where she also taught and did medical research. Following her return to the United States in 1985, Jemison made a career change and decided to follow a dream she had nurtured for a long time. In October, she applied for admission to NASA's astronaut training program. The Challenger disaster of January 1986 delayed the selection process, but when she reapplied a year later, Jemison was one of the 15 candidates chosen from a field of about 2,000. On June 4th, 1987, Jemison became the first African-American woman to be admitted into the NASA astronaut training program. After more than a year of training, she became the first African-American woman astronaut earning the title of Science Mission Specialist. 